You can't start without me, Dave. I'm getting ready. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we gather together uh, to come and receive God's grace, God's blessings, and especially, in particular, God's peace here at this Mass. We know we live in a world that is in such need of peace. We come here to receive the peace of God, and we go forth to bring that peace into our work, into our families, into our lives. And so, as we come into the presence of our good and loving God, we turn to God with humble hearts, asking for his gifts of pardon and of peace. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. So every so often, the readings for Mass will put me in mind of a great story, a great book, like a great work of literature. And this weekend's readings, as I was reflecting on them, it brought me to mind the great book Don Quixote, Don Quixote. And of course, Don Quixote is one of the greatest stories ever written, written by the Spanish novelist Cervantes. Don Quixote is a story of a Spanish nobleman who retires and doesn't know what to do with himself. And so he gets this idea that he will become a knight. He will get some armor, he will get a horse, and he will ride off into the world and fight evil. He will vanquish giants, he will, up, he will uphold the poor, he will fight for the oppressed, he's going to be a knight. And he's such a sympathetic character because his dream and his reality don't quite match up. So he wants to be this heroic 
heroic conqueror of evil and this heroic knight and he finds some rusty old armor in this poor little dilapidated horse and he just kind of goes off and gets in a lot of trouble basically that's what he ends up doing um, so if you've read the story and I think you can't do better I hopefully some of you have seen or have heard the music of the man of La Mancha which is the I think it's the greatest sort of depiction of the story of Don Quixote just beautiful beautiful music talking about this man who has this this incredibly high desire and ambition and is not quite able to do it. He's not quite able to get there. And the one song from that play, from that musical, that I often listen to over and over again is To Dream the Impossible Dream. If you haven't heard it, look it up when you get home. It's, it's one of the most amazing songs out there. To Dream the Impossible Dream. And Don Quixote sings about his desire to right the unrightable wrong, to beat the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow and to reach for the unreachable star. And it's his passion, it's his dream, and he longs for it, and he can't quite do it, and that's why he's so sympathetic a character. But if you know the story, and if you've read it, or if you've watched a movie about it, or if you've seen the musical, you know that Don Quixote has a sidekick, right? His sidekick's name is Sancho Panza. And Sancho Panza is the exact opposite of what Don Quixote is. Don Quixote is idealistic, he's ascetic, he doesn't eat very much, he's just very driven and focused. Sancho Panza is this, you know, short, kind of full little peasant, and he likes Don Quixote, and he follows him around, but Sancho Panza has none of the high ideals that Don Quixote has. In fact, all, Don, all Sancho Panza wants to do is eat and sleep and be safe. That's all he wants to do, right? So the story is marvelous, because these two get in all kinds of wacky adventures, and when Don Quixote wants to be adventurous, Sancho Panza wants to stay at an inn and just eat for the night, right? When Sancho Panza wants to, you know, wants to stay safe and just, you know, let's, let's just stop here and we'll, we'll protect ourselves, Don Quixote is charging into danger, right? So there's this tension between the two of them, and that's what makes the story so great, is this tension. And they're, they're the two... I think they're two of the greatest pairs in literature because really they represent our situation as human beings. We feel this tension as well. We sort of have this thing going on in our lives too. We have this really noble side of ourselves, this really ambitious reach for the stars, even touch, we feel like we can even touch the face of the divine. That's how lofty we are. We feel we can even reach God himself. That's the Don Quixote part of us. But we can't quite get there. Because guess what? We have Sancho Panza. We have that side of us that, oh, you know, it's earthy, it's comfortable, it wants pleasure, it's, it's, it wants to be safe. And I guess that's what makes life exciting, is we have the thing, this thing going on all the time between us. And that's what makes human history interesting. We have these two things. And in the Christian tradition, oftentimes this tension this Don Quixote part of ourself and the Sancho Panzo part of ourself is often talked about in terms of the spirit and the body, right? We have a spiritual side that is open to God's grace, that, that feels, ah, we can achieve union with God. We can, we can achieve great things. We can be virtuous. We can love. We can be compassionate. We can, we can achieve so much spiritually, but then... We have the bodily side of ourselves. That kind of pulls us back to earth. That sort of um, kind of gets us caught up in practical things and things of comfort and creature comforts. And no matter what, we're stuck with these two things, right? And we're always going back and forth between one and the other. And that's our Christian faith. And our Christian faith tells us we need both. We have both. We can't do without both. And even, even more amazingly, that God comes to us in both. That God comes to us in our bodiliness, in our creatureliness, even as much as he comes to us in our spiritual, in our spiritual nature. And there are some religions out there that kind of really separate the two things. They kind of say, no, well, there's the body and we just kind of, we got to put that aside as much as possible and focus on the spiritual part. Christianity tells us the body is good. And St. Paul tells us in the second reading, the body is the temple of the spirit. The body becomes a place where God can dwell. 
and that we can actually glorify God in what we do in our bodies, that bodily side of ourselves. So far from ignoring it or putting it to the side or saying, okay, I, I got to try to do without it, God comes to us in our creatureliness. And sometimes there's a temptation to kind of think, well, most of the sins are bodily things, right? Most of the things that maybe we go to confession for, they're things of the body. And, but our faith also tells us, ah, but there are, there are spiritual sins as well. We've got to be careful of both. We have to be careful not to go too far into one or the other because the other side will correct us. If we go too far into the body, if we indulge ourselves too much, the spirit will pull us back. The spirit will sort of, Don Quixote will kind of pull our Sancho Panza back into the middle. But the same is true on our spiritual side. Sometimes we go, we err too much on the spiritual side, whether it's our, you know, sometimes we get into the spiritual pride sort of thing. Sometimes, you know, we, we expect too much. Sometimes we're too unrealistic. And how many of us have had that moment where, bump, 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 we fall back to earth, right? Our Sancho Panza pulls us down. And it's good. And that's how it should be, I feel. God has given us the body and the spirit, probably so that one side does not overcome the other side. That one side is always correcting the other. That yes, we have a spirit, but we also have a body. And we need to take care of the body and honor the body. We have a body, but we need to take care of the spirit. We need to be feeding our spiritual side as well. In the gospel today, we hear the disciples discovering Jesus and they are so excited that they have found the divine in a human form. And this is really the very beginning of our Christian faith, is this discovery that God has come to us in human form. Behold the Lamb of God. Christ is among us. Christ shares our bodily and our spiritual experiences. And he asks us to allow God to speak to us in both. And so my brothers and sisters, as we come together today before the Lord, we ask that we can honor both our bodies and our spirits. We can live that tension, and we can know that the Word became flesh, God became a human being, and truly dwells among us. Amen. As one family of faith, let us stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us present our petitions to our loving God. That those who lead our church may receive God's guidance and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those suffering oppression throughout the world may experience the peace of Christ in their lands and in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who struggle with chronic physical ailments may grow strong under the gentle and nurturing hand of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus' love may conform us evermore to his own heart as we strive to follow him more closely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young men and women may hear the Lord calling them to a vocation in the church and to respond as his faithful servants. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the souls of the faithful departed may find eternal peace in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Ray Robert Smith, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause and call to mind our own personal intentions. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as this uh, January 22nd is National Right for Life Day, we pray in a special way for an end to abortion and for the promotion of a culture of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear the prayers of your people <clears throat> who have been called to follow your Son. Answer them in your goodness. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. <clears throat> Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By his passion on the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gives us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Joseph and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of the entire world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. Pour down upon us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as we look ahead toward Lent, around the corner, um, we are going to be having a Lenten Bible study uh, through Zoom uh, on the Thursday evenings of Lent from 7 to 8. It's going to be on the uh, Christian journey according to the Gospel of Mark. So if you are interested, please just shoot me an email and I can sign you up. Again, it's going to be on Zoom for the Thursdays uh, of Lent, 7 to 8 in the evening. Also, tomorrow being uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, uh, the office will be closed and we'll be having morning, morning Mass at 9 a.m., morning prayer, half hour before Mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.